let me start this uh, aging session uh, together with uh, Guanghui. Um, so, in fact, he's uh, the first speaker. So let me introduce him. He's a uh, current. Uh, he has he was recently the professor of uh, at the Institute of Biophysics um, at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and recently moved the department, I guess, to stem cell um, regeneration also at the Chinese Academy of Science, Sciences. And today uh, he will talk about the programming and reprogramming of aging. Thank you, Guanghui. Okay, thanks for the kind introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Guanghui Liu, and I'm from Institute of Stem Cell and Regeneration, Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's a great honor to have the opportunity to report our work in the aging venue. The topic of my talk is the programming and the reprogramming of aging. As we all know, the world's population is getting older. Importantly, aging is the main risk factor for most chronic diseases. I will discuss the following topics today, which include primate models for aging study, mechanism of stem cell aging, aging intervention, and lastly, new aging biomarkers. So the first question I want to ask is, can we use primate animal models to study the mechanism of aging? We focus on 13.6, a well-known longevity gene, and the 13.6 knockout caused premature aging in mice. To test whether 13.6 is a longevity gene in primates, we generated 13.6 knockout monkeys through CRISPR-Cas9. Interestingly, monkeys do not show any features of accelerated aging. Instead, they show prenatal developmental retardation. The brain of a newborn monkey with 13.6 deficiency is very similar to that of a fetus. In fact, an independent research team also pointed out that a loss of function 13.6 mutation in humans can cause prenatal developmental delay. Both studies support 13.6 as a developmental gene for the primates. Further study indicates that 13.6 deficiency upper regulates linker RNA H19 in monkey brains and the human embryonic stem cell derived neuronal progenitor cells. In wet, test, in wet type cells, 13.6 transrepresses H19 pressure through histone A3 deacetylation. When 13.6 is depleted, H19 is transcriptional induced and counteracts neuronal differentiation. It's worth noting that all expression of H19 leads to silver Russell syndrome, which is a stunting disease. So we are also interested in whether primate animal models can be used to study pathological uh, aging. HGPS is a premature aging uh, disease caused by a single point mutation of the Lamy A gene. HGPS patients undergo accelerated aging and die of atherosclerosis. In collaboration with Professor Ji Wei Zhi's lab, we generated the HGPS monkey through base editing. Monkeys show signs of accelerated aging, including atherosclerosis. They also show premature cellular senescence, just like the HGPS patient. Studying human aging is, is important but also challenging because aging of different organs can cause various human diseases. In order to sim simplify complex syndrome systems, we use uh, various genetic disease models to study human aging. The research method we use is a combination of somatic cell reprogramming and gene editing. In the past 10 years, we have generated a series of stem cell models of human aging related diseases, including HTPS, Werner syndrome, and so on. Using these models, we study the pathogenesis of these diseases and the possible intervention targets. Take Werner syndrome as an example. This is a disease caused by the lack of WM protein. The patients show almost all the aging related diseases but they appear in an accelerated manner. To mimic this disease, we knocked out WN in human mass chemo stem cells. After WN is knocked out, these cells become senescent, implying that stem cell exhaustion is a feature of premature aging disease. In addition, we identified that 
doublon inhibits cellular synthesis by stabilizing heterochromatin at the nuclear periphery. When doublon is depleted, heterochromatin becomes decondensed and accelerates cellular synthesis. We also found that stabilizing epigenome is a common geoprotective mechanism for human mesochemo stem cells. All in all, we found that stem cell decay is the characteristic and the driving force of aging. Therefore, we want to know how to rejuvenate aged stem cells. This process could be challenging because it may involve stem cell desenescence and epigenetic reprogramming. As I mentioned before, heterochromatin decondensation is a driver for cellular aging. It's actually an epigenetic process. Therefore, it may be possible to reprogram senescent cells to a younger state. Based on this idea, we screened the various small molecule compounds. Vitamin C shows the most obvious effect of delaying human mesenchymal stem cell senescence. It's worth noting that vitamin C is not only an antioxidant, but also an epigenetic regulator. We also established an estrogenic stem cell model of HGPS and use it to review that RF2, an antioxidant transcription factor, is inactivated by mutant lamin A, which leads to cellular senescence. Next, through drug screening, we found that the reactivation of RF2 by Altiprise, an FDA-approved RF2 activator, inhibits accelerated senescence of human mesenchymal stem cells. In addition, we found that the activation of RF2 by metformin delays human mesenchymal stem cell synthesis. By further expanding the scope of drug screening, we found that low-dose crescentin can alleviate human stem cell aging. So far, we have identified a group of small molecule compounds that have a protective effect on human mesenchymal stem cells. Among them, we have initiated clinical trials using crescentin and vitamin C to treat human premature aging. The next scientific question is, because stem cell decay occurs during aging, can stem cell supplements be used to treat aging-related diseases? We need to pay close attention to two issues regarding stem cell therapy. One is efficacy and the other is safety. Especially when introduced into aging microenvironments, stem cells are challenged by different stress factors. In addition, cancer promoting stress and the genomic instability may also lead to malignant transformation of these cells. Therefore, we hope to achieve enhanced efficacy and safety through gene editing. Our first key target is RF2, as I mentioned before. RF2 is a transcriptional factor with geoprotective and tumor preventive effects. We edited a single nucleotide in the RF2 gene, which causes a change in one amino acid and protein translocation from the cytosol to the nucleus, thereby increasing the biological activity of RF2. We found that a single amino acid change in RF2 makes cells resistant to replicative senescence various toxic stimuli and the malignant transformation induced by oncogenes. We therefore call these cells genetically enhanced stem cells. Later, we found that these genetically enhanced stem cells effectively promote vascular regeneration and repair in the mouse hand limb ischemia model. Next, we investigated whether genetically enhanced stem cells can be also be obtained by editing other sites in the genome. Considering that the longevity protein FOXO3 is an antioxidant and a tumor suppressor, we edited the two nucleotides on the FOXO3 gene and thus changed two, nuclear, uh, two amino acids. These changes prevent FOXO3 from being phosphorylated by AKT, which in turn leads to its accumulation in the nucleus. We found that FOXO3 engineered human mesenchymal stem cell not only promote the repair of blood vessels, but also resist tumorigenic transformation. In addition, focus 3 enhanced the vascular endothelial cells and the smooth muscle cells also promote vascular regeneration in ischemia sites of mouse hand limb. 
altogether, our study shows that FOXO3 is the defender of vascular homeostasis and genetically enhancing the function of FOXO3 may provide high quality and reliable trans uh, transplant materials for regenerative medicine. In summary, using gene editing, we can not only repair gene mutations in our stem cells, but also improve the ability of stem cells to resist their own aging, various stresses, and the tumorigenic transformation. Big back that these cells will one day be used to treat aging-related diseases. The next question is whether we can use gene therapy to restore the aged stem cell in our body to a younger state. In this case, we have mainly focused on the treatment of osteoarthritis, a disease related to aging. With age, senescent mesenchymal stem cells or precursor cells in the joint stop regenerating into cartilage and instead start to release pro-inflammatory cytokines. Here, our hypothesis is that osteoarthritis may be treated by introducing certain stem cell rejuvenating factors through viral vectors. Recently, we identified four uh, rejuvenation factors for human mesenchymal stem cells, which can effectively alleviate the symptoms of osteoarthritis after being introduced into the joint cavity using lantiviral vectors. These factors, including DGCR8, a microRNA processing protein, YAP, and is a new target gene, FOXD1, and the secondary transcription factor, CLOG. Therefore, the use of viral vectors to introduce stem cell rejuvenation factors for gene therapy may represent a new strategy for treating aging-related diseases, such as osteoarthritis in the future. The last scientific question we wish to answer is, how old are we? This seemingly simple question is so important because we do not yet understand our biological age. We need to mention that I like the development, the aging process is relatively heterogeneous. In theory, the aging laws, aging kinetics, and the aging markers of every cells in our body are not exactly the same. Therefore, it's necessary to understand the cell type specific aging programs and the molecular markers, which is not enabled by single cell sequencing technology. In collaboration with Professor Fu Chou Tang at Peking University, we have drawn a single cell atlas of primate ovaries and found that the de deregulation of red dog genes is a sign of pri primate ovary aging. In addition, we generated the single cell transcriptome of primate retina and the adjacent chor choroid. We identified that oxidative stress is a major aging feature of the cells in the neuronal retina layer. Well, uh, enhanced uh, inflammatory response is that of RPE and the uh, 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 choroid cells. In addition, RPE is a cell type most susceptible to aging in retina. We also mapped the single cell transcriptome of primate eyelid. Here, we found that the loss of protein homeostasis is a feature of pan pancreatic beta cell aging. By single cell transcriptomic sequencing, we also found that the down regulation of FOXO3A, a longevity gene, is a hallmark of primate vascular aging. The next scientific question we, want, we are interested in is how organs work together in the body aging process. By performing single cell sequencing of nine different organs, we found that caloric restriction can reprogram the transcriptional landscape of red aging. Caloric restriction not only inhibits cellular synthesis, but also reduces the pro-inflammatory cells in different tissues with age. To summarize, we have developed human stem cell models and the primate models to study the mechanism and the regulation of aging. The combination of stem cell and gene editing technology can be used to screen drugs for prevention or treatment of aging-related disorders. Stem cell therapy and gene therapy 
are expected to be applied to treatment of aging-related disorders. The application of single-cell technology helps to review new biomarkers of aging. So our team is mainly focused on stem cell and healthy aging. So finally, I want to take this opportunity to thank my, uh, part of my team members, as well as uh, uh, the collaborator, including Fu Chou Tang, Guo Guo Ji Guo, Jing Qu, Wei Qi Zhang, Mo Shi Shong, Qi Zhou, Jie Qiao, Wei Zhi Ji, Zhi Zhen Wang, Tao Xu, and so on. And also my international uh, collaborator, including Juan Carlos Belmonte, Tommy Staley, Go, uh, Vera Gubanova, John Sadivy, Brian Kennedy. Finally, thank you very much for your kind attention. I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you so much, Kwame. That was exactly 15 minutes from when you started. Thank you for being on time. So any questions from the uh, audience? Uh, you can type in your questions on uh, Q&A. You can see uh, the icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Um, if I can start a question, it was really interesting. I also have very much uh, interest on chromatin changes, epigenetic changes upon aging. And um, I've also you know, thought about using those aging, premature aging models. And as you've shown, there are many sort of DNA repair or <clears throat> nuclear architecture like uh, lamin that is uh, known to be have uh, mutations that is probably driving the premature aging. So, but you know, in the field, I think it was never really been established before uh, whether the actual, um, whether there is a, the function is uh, of the nuclear membrane is actually responsible for accelerating aging or its protein is doing something else. What, what is the, uh, the established understanding in the field right now? Yeah, yeah, it's a very important and interesting question. Actually, the nuclear envelope is very important, not only uh, by its function, uh, um, you, you know, the organizing the uh, chromatin, but also it's a site uh, to regulate gene, uh, gene compression. So yeah. actually, it's a common sense in this field that with age, the nuclear envelope become deformed. Yes. And you can also see the loss of hydrochromatin and also, and uh, you know, the gene compression changes. So the nuclear envelope, by we examine the, the, the neuronal cells in, in the monkey, in the aged monkey, you can see that the nuclear envelope also become enlarged uh, and also deformed. And uh, with, uh, yeah, accompanied by the loss of hydrochromatin uh, markers. So I, I think it's, it's common uh, across different cell types during the aging process from the rodents uh, to primates. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and how much is DNA repair driving aging, do you think? Because also DNA repair proteins, of course, are often in the aging. Yeah, yeah. It's also a good question. I think it's DNA repair pathway, response pathway is very important. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but compared to the uh, chromatin organization uh, proteins, uh, they are not conflict actually. Some DNA repair protein, they are also histone uh, remodeling protein, chromatin remodeling protein. And also, yeah, they are, they are interconnected and interplay. Right. So, but when we overexpress the hydrochromatin protein, for example, HP1 alpha and the gamma, mm -hmm. we yep. can see the phenotypic rescue in the senescent cells, even if there are some enhanced DNA damage response. That suggests that hydrochromatin remodeling, so all the condensation of hydrochromatin again, they, they could rescue the, uh, 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 they, they could exist, uh, exert a dual protective role. That means that even if the, the chromatin have some damage, but if the, uh, the, the chromatin organization is younger, so the cell will mm -hmm. become younger. So I think both, both sides contribute to the senescent process. Uh, they are both okay. important. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so we have a question from Alistair Forrest. Uh, does slowing aging equal reducing cell divisions? to avoid depletion of stem cells or allowing them to continue to divide longer? Uh, 
sorry, my signal is not good. So yeah. ah, do you see the message in the chat? Maybe it's easier for you to see. In the, in the, in the Q&A, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, it's in the chat from in our chat. OK, OK, yeah. I will find the chat. Okay. Yes, you mean the first one or the second? Which, which question? I think it's the last question. The last question, okay. A slowing aging, reducing cell. Oh, and Jessica has a question too. Yeah, it's this one or different one? Uh, does slowing aging equal reducing cell divisions? Do you see it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think so because <laughs> this senescence means the cell stop, stop division. So it's different. I mean that for stem cells in essence, we want to improve its uh, prolif uh, proliferation capability, not reducing cell division is in the opposite, I think. Actually, so there was a question from Tommy Terawata, it's actually posted up in my lab. Uh, Steve Hogwood has shown in his new manuscript with the methylation clock in BATS uh, study, that type two innate immune response is predictive of longevity. Did you find similar results with your study? Yeah, this is a good question. Actually, we identified that recently that uh, with senescence, the retrocyte poson, including LAM1 and the other one, and get activated. So this one will activate uh, uh, innate immune uh, pathway. For example, CKSD and downstream and uh, uh, nf kappa b and they are, they are interconnected uh, to the uh, uh, senescence associated uh, 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 secretory phenotype. So although I didn't do studies in, in bat, but I think the uh, innate, uh, innate immune response is strongly linked to the aging, including the senescence process, I think. Thank you. So uh, Jessica, we can take a quick question from you. Yeah, no, thank you, Guanque. That was amazing work. Um, it's really nice to see all the different studies. I just wanted to know when you were talking about desenescence of the stem cells, um, that sounds like, can you speak to how challenging that is? Like, would it not be easier to flow, like add new stem cells and have them function and, and remove the senescent cells? Yeah, this is a good question. Actually, our idea is not, uh, not, not synolytic not mean to, to kill the senescent cells. We want to rejuvenate senescent cells. That means, firstly, we have to rejuvenate the aged epigenome. So if the, the aging, the, the cellular senescence uh, is uh, the, determined by the epigenetic process, so maybe the aging cell could be reprogrammed to a younger uh, state, including its uh, epigenome. So this is our idea. So uh, Aki just asked a question about yeah, how the DNA repair and the epigenome work how they work together or differently uh, to the aging process. Actually, I think the epigenome is most importantly, even if the DNA, DNA damage occurs. So that's why we, we, we hypothesize that some chemicals could have the ability to rejuvenate the senescent cell. Actually, we found that several compounds, including vitamin C, altiporis, chrysanthemum, and the others, including some uh, metabolites, they have the power to, to rejuvenate the aged epigenome. This uh, is uh, what we found. So I think <laughs> this, this, this is not that, that easy. And also we found that introduce even one protein, protein factor by Lanti or AV uh, factor. So it's good enough or it's sufficient to rejuvenate the senescent cells. This suggests the possibility that the senescent cells could be rejuvenated. Uh, at least at the epigenome uh, level. Thank you, Jessica. That's really amazing stuff. All right, thank you. Um